but super detail oriented. We'll take times obsessing over Pantone colors and materiality. And, you know, I think that's really what it takes to make a difference and an impact in a, a market that's just so competitive. Hello, and welcome to Sink or Swim, a weekly podcast brought to you by RentSync, where we take a deep dive into the prop tech, multifamily, and rental housing industry. In each episode, we uncover the technologies and strategies used to help overcome operational challenges and increase the value of your multifamily investments. So let's get into our conversation today. Welcome back to Sink or Swim. I'm your host, Nicolina Savelli, and you're listening to Get Synced, where I take a tactical approach to helping those in multifamily improve their marketing and advertising efforts. And today I have two guests with me. One will be my acting co-host for the episode, the Regis to my Kelly, if you will, Max Steinman, who is the VP of Growth at RentSync. I also have our main guest for today's episode, Ryan Funt with me, who is the Director of Marketing at Fitzrovia. Welcome to the show, guys. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Thanks for including me. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. And uh, I should mention it is a special day today. Um, I know that this is going to release in a couple of weeks, but that doesn't matter. Today is Ryan's birthday. So, yeah, so we're celebrating Ryan's birthday by making him come on a podcast episode <laughs> and answer all of our hard questions. So, thank you, Ryan. Best, best <laughs> birthday gift ever. So, thanks, guys. <laughs> So besides Ryan's birthday, this conversation is going to focus a lot around the Waverly lease up that Ryan did with Fitzrovia. And I have Max here because he was the lead on the account at RentSync. And I wanted to have Max part of this conversation because he works so closely with this incredible project and feel he's going to be able to dig in a lot to the nuances with Ryan. But before we get into that, Ryan, do you mind telling us a little bit about your background and the work you've done in your career, specifically around managing and marketing luxury purpose-built rentals? Yeah, for sure. I'd be happy to. Well, thank you for the intro. I would just start by saying that I got involved in purpose-built rentals at a time when they were a fairly novel concept to the Canadian market. And you know, while Canada has seen a lot of purpose-built rental development over, call it, the past half decade, I would still make the argument that it's still a very specialized niche and really still only represents a small fraction of the residential development that's happening here in Canada. And I would go even further to say that we're really a nation that's still dominated by condominium developments. And how did you get started in that? What was your kind of pull or push towards towards purpose luxury built rentals? So I'll, I'll give you a bit about my background and a bit about my story. Before I was with Fitzrovia, I had the opportunity to oversee a pretty large portfolio of purpose built rentals from an operations perspective. Right. Yeah. And, and what was really special about that role was I was able to take most of my assets from early stage development and planning all the way to stabilization, call it 95 to 98% occupancy. Right. So I was actually exposed to literally every part of the purpose-built rental development life cycle very early on in my career when this type of opportunity was truly um, a total rarity. And I would also go on to say that on top of my daily assignment of managing a leasing team and an admin team and a repairs and maintenance team, and, and really a team of over 30 people. I was also consulting for industry leaders on their new rental developments. Perfect. Now, obviously, that experience set you up for success or at least a lot of information that you took from those that role came into play at Fitzrovia. Do you want to speak to how any of those learning experiences has guided you in this role as marketing director at Fitzrovia? Yeah, no, that's a that's a really fair point. Like I, I would say with the last role, I was really given an opportunity to tour assets all over the United States in markets like Seattle, San Diego, and and Dallas. And and really what an opportunity to see sort of the best in class class A rental examples from right. an amenities perspective, a suite layout perspective, a, a technology perspective and an operations perspective, really. Yeah, that's perfect. I think that that leads kind of into my next question, too, and talking about Fitzrovia. 
Now, this company has a such a unique value proposition in the purpose-built rental market. You have such a compelling portfolio and pride yourself on offering best-in-class amenities and design. And I'd really like to get a sense of that mission and what it means to you and how you're able to deliver on it in, I guess, the Canadian market and and in all of your, your rental properties. Yeah. So I think maybe at this point, it makes sense to tell you how I found out about Fitzrovia and how that, you know, opportunity sort of came to be for me. I've always really admired, um, you know, my current CEO, Adrian Rocca. Mm-hmm. And at my former role, uh, I dealt with Adrian a little bit. We worked on the Brixton a bit together and a bit on the Selby as well. And, and one thing that I remembered is Adrian's ability to sort of challenge the status quo and really push limits. Mm-hmm. And what I gathered from Adrian was not only a desire to push and maximize returns and drive NOI, but also an understanding that if you're going to do all those things, that you know you really need to deliver an incredible product that challenges conventional thinking and is really in line with consumer desire. And Max, I, I would say, you know, you and me both toured the Waverly last week, and you could really see the attention to detail. You know, when you enter the Waverly, you don't feel like you're touring just another rental development in Toronto. Uh, you truly feel like you're in a boutique hotel in Manhattan. So it's uh, again, when I when I heard that Adrian was was doing his own thing, he was starting his own property management platform that was completely vertically integrated. You know, that was really an opportunity that I couldn't pass up. And so Adrian brought me in as the first employee in Fitzrovia's uh, property management division to help uh, build out a platform. And really, it was interesting that early days, Adrian recognized that I had a creative eye, I had a degree in architecture, um, and he really encouraged me to take on a marketing role, which has really driven me to do some of my best work. Um, so that's a, a bit of a, a background. Um, more on uh, Fitzrovia to, <laughs> to tie back to your original question there, Nicolina. <laughs> but um, who are we? So essentially, uh, Fitzrovia is a full service firm. Uh, we own 100% of the process, the development process. Essentially, what that means is we take assets all the way from land acquisition to property management operations. You know, our, our philosophy is that we believe that owning the process from beginning to end allows us to make the best possible decisions to ensure long-term success. So if I could think of a very high-level example, I would say, you know, consider our leasing teams on the ground floor. They're constantly in tune and talking with uh, rental prospects. And potentially, you know, over time, they're getting feedback that, let's say, our suite layouts aren't great, or this, this particular finish is amazing and prospects are loving it. And so... We take that feedback, whether good or bad, it doesn't really matter. And we disseminate that data to the appropriate person or division, whether it be construction or development, and use that data in real time to inform future decisions based on quality data. Whereas if you're segmented, a lot of that critical information can get lost in translation. Sure. I guess speaking to that point, and I know this isn't in my line of questions, but how do you disseminate that information effectively across your teams? Is there a process that you're using? I know you've mentioned a platform. Is that part of the process? You know, I feel like communicating to the amount of people that you have to communicate to, that can be a complex process. So could you walk me through a little bit of that? Yeah, I mean, I would say that we're we're a very open organization. Mm-hmm. We all value and respect what one another does. And, you know, we really, we really have the right people at the table at the right time. So for example, we were working on our Yorkdale uh, plans. We're doing uh, three towers there right beside uh, Yorkdale shopping mall. And during a, a design meeting, not only were, you know, the developers there, our development team, uh, but we sat down with uh, Michelle Calloway, our VP operations. We sat down with Bahar Poosh. Uh, she's our director of interior design. Adrian was at the meeting as well. We have construction team members join as well. So really, it's about having all the expertise, all the right people at the table to have these open conversations. And the energy in the boardroom is really kinetic. Right. Like we are we are spiraling off of each other. We are 
bringing different ideas to the table. And all the ideas are, are truly remarkable. If you remain fragmented, a lot of the great ideas that come from operations or that come from construction uh, can be lost, sure. right? So you think about third-party property management, right? Yeah. Like the third-party guys, they have they have great ideas, like they have great insight. But by the time you recruit them, you get them on board, the development could potentially be built sure. and they just have to operate an asset that may not be efficient. I think it's safe to say that um, Fitzrovia puts uh, an incredibly high level of focus and value on talent. And that's actually something that's super unique. I don't know if you want to comment on that, Ryan, but um, it's something that you see a lot in the U.S., just an unbelievable amount of talent in, in this industry and uh, hiring high, high level talent. Uh, but I mean, I think you probably feel that way about your colleagues and yourself uh, at Fitzrovia. It's, yeah. it's pretty transparent. It's pretty obvious yeah. that that's, that's the, uh, the culture you know, where the value is being placed. Mm-hmm. No, no, totally. You hit the nail on the rock there, Max. Like I would just say that everybody that we work with, everyone is a true professional. Everyone is super respectful and people come into the office with an openness to listen to one another. Like uh, we just won the 2021 NAA National Apartment Association's Best Places to Work, which is obviously a huge award uh, to win, especially if you're a young company like us. But it's, it's really all about the human component. It's the people on our team. Uh, it's super collaborative, super detail-oriented. Uh, we'll, we'll take times obsessing over Pantone colors and uh, materiality. And I, I think that's really what it takes to make a difference in an, an impact in a, a market that's just so competitive. Especially when the product is so unique, which is what you guys are you know, attempting. And uh, when you've got that level of differentiation, um, you know, it, it becomes more and more important that you have that talent uh, as part of your team. We will get into those details shortly. I do have one just small question uh, that you brought up. You talked about being in a boardroom. Now, we're obviously in the middle of a pandemic. How has your team been able to adjust and kind of adapt during this time? How did you guys navigate that and make sure that that culture and collaboration still existed? Yeah, no, that's a really uh, good question. You know, just like every other organization, we're we're working through it. Most of us are working uh, remotely. Some of us are in the office, but uh, there, there's certainly been a lot of time uh, spent at home. I think, if anything, it's uh, it's how it's changed uh, leasing mm-hmm. for us, right? Like we've we've pivoted to a completely online um, leasing program. Of course, you know things are getting better. And uh, we're going to start hosting in-person tours at the Waverly um, sort of in no time by appointment only. But the entirety of this pre-lease and lease up has been all virtual. And so we've had to challenge ourselves to make sure that our execution online is as flawless as it is in person, right? Like in person is it's been done. People have their formulas. Everybody knows what the tour path should look like. Everybody knows how they're going to scent the lobby, uh, how they're going to light their model suites, uh, how they're going to accessorize their models, all of that. But what caught the industry by surprise is how do you pivot online and execute in a really, really great way? And I, I think we've been successful in doing that. I don't want to go too far into this because I yeah. feel like could, I could keep spiraling um, in these questions. I want to turn my focus to the start of the Waverly and and the building and everything. And then maybe we can work our way back to this conversation. So the Waverly is a building very rich in history, the previous home of the Silver Dollar Room and the Waverly Hotel and situated in an arts and culture-driven community in the heart of Toronto. So can you share how important it was to incorporate that history into the building itself and how you were able to leverage that in your marketing work? And maybe you can talk a little bit about what you just mentioned and, and how you executed that. Yeah, and for sure, you know, I'm always more than happy to talk Waverly with, with anybody. But I, I think what's important with the Waverly is to understand our approach to marketing uh, to really understand how the brand identity was born. And really, it was born from the building's historic site. 
former Waverly Hotel. It was a low-rise uh, hotel in downtown Toronto. In '59, the Silver Dollar Room opened its doors. The Silver Dollar went on to become one of the most famous uh, and beloved music venues in Toronto, hosting some incredible acts like uh, Bob Dylan, you know, Mac DeMarco, The Pixies, uh, Bare Naked Ladies, Blue Rodeo, and and so many more. And so really, our approach to marketing was to embrace the history of the site. And on that note, I, I would also say that the Silver Dollar was demolished and then completely rebuilt. It's a registered heritage landmark, and we've reincorporated a lot of the site's original elements back into the Silver Dollar. And, and Max, I know I took you on a little tour, but uh, essentially the venue's original bar, the stage, um, the original oil paintings with... Billie Holiday and all these amazing musicians are all featured within the oil paintings. They've all been put back into place. The original terrazzo flooring and really, of course, the iconic neon silver dollar sign has been remounted. So with that in mind, consider the subtle nuances in building design and web design that pay tribute to the silver dollar. For example, the neon lighting uh, details on the Thrush Holmes painting in our lobby, the neon glow of the Waverly logo on our website, those elements are all playing tribute to the silver dollar and that iconic sign, as well as the neighborhood. And I'll, I'll stop there and just say, Max, we've uh, we've had our fair share of late nights at uh, Roll Sand <laughs> Restaurant in Chinatown, and we've had some great, uh, you know, dim sum there. Uh, like, you think about like the sign, the neon sign in the window with the famous lobster and, and the colors, like. All of this is a testament to the history of the silver dollar and, and the area. The last thing that I'll point out is some of the collateral we put together uh, for the project, which was really, really special. The Waverly's printed brochure uh, was designed to emulate a vintage vinyl record sleeve. And clearly, when you hold it in your hands, it does feel like a classic punk album. We gave away T-shirts as part of our leasing efforts, and you can hold them in your hands and you just see that it, it feels like a, a concert T-shirt like you would get at a traditional merch stand. So uh, a lot of really, really key details uh, that went into the marketing at uh, the Waverly that really honor the area and the specific site. And I will say it's incredibly cool. Like they've, they've, uh, the silver dollar room, which I've been to in the past, uh, is going to look like the old silver dollar room. And, uh, it's just the way that that's tied into an apartment building is really cool. Like that's like no other apartment building probably in the city will ever have that. <laughs> so really, really unique amenity. Um, I just have one question for Ryan. It's like when, when uh, the pandemic is behind us and we can get back to concerts, mm -hmm. who will be opening at the, at the new Silver Dollar Room? Give me a dream band <laughs> that you guys are going to have as your opening band. <laughs> oh, my God. That's a, that's a toughie. I mean, I'd, I'd love to see, like, can you imagine getting, you know, a Neil Young on board for that and just uh, unplugged acoustic? That would just be next level. You're thinking very <laughs> high. <laughs> I love it. I think you could do it. They've been, they haven't been, tour people haven't been touring in a year and a half. You might be able to get it. You never know. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. I'd like to see the Bare Naked Ladies. Somebody who's played there and comes back. We're manifesting right now. We're putting it out into the world. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> like what you hear so far? Make sure you never miss an episode by clicking the subscribe button now. This podcast is made possible by listeners like you. Thank you for your support. Now let's get back to the show. So I do want to talk about the amenities you've put into the way, really, which I'm a little obsessed with. Obviously, as a dog owner myself who pays $200 every other month to get their dog groomed, the Beauty and the Beast pet spa is like, the coolest thing makes me want to live at the Waverly, in all honesty. Can you walk me through some of the amenities, like the pet spa, the lobby lounge featuring the boxcar social, the infinity pool? I mean, the list goes on and on. And why were these amenities so important to this lease up? And how have you been able to market those to prospects right now? Well, thanks for the question. It's interesting because the Waverly is truly a boutique rental experience. It's only 166 units. Right. But what's what's interesting about that is it has 
a comprehensive amenity package that truly rivals competitive communities that are three times the size or double the size. And as you've pointed out, we do have three branded uh, amenities that are exclusive to the Fitzrovia collection of communities. You pointed out one, so Beauty for the Beast, it's our branded pet spa experience, our signature infinity pools, which we've deemed uh, Lido, and our fitness centers, which we call the Temple, which hold an official uh, hammer strength uh, training facility designation, which is pretty huge. Which is insane, by the way. Like this fitness facility is nicer than probably any any paid gym membership uh, in the entire city. It's incredible. The view is incredible as well. Yeah, I saw that. And I wanted to dig into into those things just because why? Why were those things crucial to Fitzrovia? Why did you want to include those? I mean, you could have an endless supply of amenities, but why were those the ones that made you like say, yes, this is what we need. This is what our community wants. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really just about talking to renters and, yeah. and understanding what they want, right? And I think to Max's point, to really appreciate these spaces, you truly have to walk them uh, to understand just how special they are. Sure. Right? Like if you think about the penthouse gym, the temple, the view from your treadmill is absolutely incredible with views Hmm. of the CN Tower. And I would also say that the devil's in the details, right? Like we have uh, greenhouse juice vending machines in all of our gyms. And so, you know, pre or post or, you know, during a workout, you can grab a cold pressed juice, a bottle of kombucha and really enjoy. Wow. And so it's, it's really about talking to your, your, your rental prospects. And, and we host a lot of a lot of consumer survey groups. Like we actually will interview uh, prospective renters and, and get their feedback and, and taking that uh, information and just implementing it. I think that's such a strong point and takeaway. It's so important to just getting on that ground level and asking renters what they what they want and what what will really take the experience to the next level for them. Yeah, it's it's actually interesting because, uh, and I think I mentioned this to Max the other day, but I actually, you know, I saw. Uh, a name come into our CRM queue the other day, and I actually knew the person. It was an old friend of mine, <laughs> and I was talking to her about the Waverly, and I'm like, of course, I'm going to speak to her directly. Right. And her feedback to me was, you know, greenhouse juice in your gym <laughs> and in the lobby, like you have me sold, right? And I think, you know, right. it's, it's truly thinking outside the box and partnering with these best in class brands to amplify the experience, right? Like it's it's just not enough to say I have a pet spa or I have a gym. These these facilities truly have to be something special that make your resident base, you know, want to sign a lease at your particular asset. Absolutely. And that moves directly into my next point, which is the promotions that you have offered right now. You have on the Waverly website, I saw you have a Structube gift card, Boxcar social gift card, and also a chance to get your tuition paid. So can you tell us a little bit about the story behind these promotions? And as a follow-up question, did COVID influence you to get more creative with these promotions? And will they continue in other purpose-built rentals moving forward, do you think? Or was this like, okay, we really need people to, to go for this during COVID? Yeah, I mean, totally. So, of course, we um, we closely, you know, follow market trends to determine a competitive and compelling concession strategy. Of course, should that be warranted? Mm-hmm. Our approach with the Waverly, and this is always our approach, was to uh, support our partners. So, we have a boxcar social slated to open in our lobby. They're gonna, you know, offer pastries, uh, you know, fresh ground espresso, worldly wines, and it's directly in the lobby lounge. So call it, call it host, it's just like a hotel style kind of concept where the bar kind of opens up onto the broader lobby. Right. So very different than your traditional, okay, we have retail, we need to lease that retail and it's in a separate retail bay. So that was part of it. We wanted to uh, support our partners and tie that to the concession strategy at the Waverly. And similar to Boxcar, we have a partnership with Structube. You know, if our residents ever want to purchase anything at Structube, uh, they automatically receive 10% off all purchases. And so that was sort of the uh, the premise of the $1,000 Structube gift card. Perfect. And the chance to get your tuition paid. I haven't seen that kind of promotion being done from a 
a property management company. I see it from like Scotia Bank. So how are you <laughs> able to offer something like that? And why was it important to it? The the beautiful thing about the Waverly is it's located at College in Spadina, right. which is literally steps to the University of Toronto mm-hmm. and OCAD University. And so we certainly do look to our competitors um, and analyze very closely what are they doing. And so we have a great concession package already in play uh, to be competitive in the market. But you brought up Scotiabank. And I certainly believe that, you know, you know with Fitzrovia and our marketing approaches, we're not just going to look at what competitors are doing. Uh, we're definitely going to look at what best in class consumer brands are doing. And we're always going to be, you know, looking at our, our end consumer to make sure that our offerings are super appealing, right? So we would look at, you know, what is, what is Audi doing? Perfect. What is yep. ESOP doing? Mm-hmm. Makes sense. What is Nike doing, right? So we try to challenge the status quo. Uh, we try and be in line with our end consumer. You know, we talked about being in close proximity to both universities, major universities. And of course, these are, these are times where, you know, university students, you know, they're looking for a place, right? They need to sign a lease before uh, the September semester starts. So again, it's just about staying creative and, and not rigid in your approach. Absolutely makes sense. Smart. My final question from my side is, can we chat a little bit about the timelines and goals around the Waverly lease up and how you've been working with RentSync to achieve those goals? Yeah, of course. So I was saying it, I was on a call with Max this morning and I was saying it then, but it's, it's truly remarkable what our leasing team has been able to accomplish. We've achieved, you know, above market rents during a pandemic that has truly impacted Class A product, especially in the downtown core. And so far, we've exceeded our performa from a revenue perspective. And really, we're on target to meet our absorption timeline. And so back to your original question, with RentSync, uh, we've rolled out a number of initiatives. That said, our community website is the key component of our digital marketing strategy. And we have an ultimate goal to drive all rental prospects uh, to our website because it truly is the best representation of our product um, and what it is we're offering at the Waverly. When you visit the waverlylife.ca, you can clearly see the amount of effort that RentSync poured into the website. It's stunning. It's custom. The user experience is, is really exceptional. Absolutely. Yeah. As I said in our prep call, the Waverly website, it seems to me like a complete website, a complete experience. Doesn't even feel like a lease up. It feels like I know exactly what I would get when I walk through the door. It's, yeah, just so custom and makes you feel. And the speed is also very, very fast. I will note that. It's really great. And just the visuals that obviously you guys sourced and put on that website are just really compelling and make you want to come see and, and walk through and, and, and take a tour. So on that note, I'm going to give my co-host Max Steinman the floor to ask a few of his own questions. So Max, the floor is now yours. For sure. I was going to ask uh, why Fitzrovia likes to be different and uh, what does it mean to be different? But to some degree, I mean, everything that we've been speaking to uh, outlines that so much. You know, one of the, I mean, I also have to congratulate you because uh, what you said in, in your last response, Ryan, which is that you guys are on pace or on target for your absorption strategy. And not too many people or companies are able to say that through through the pandemic. So I think that you know a lot of those differences uh, are helping you stay on target. One of the you know really unique elements uh, when you walk into the Waverly is the art. You've got basically like a mascot sort of thing. Do you want to speak to that? Uh, I think you guys call him Bird, uh, is it Birdman? Yeah, yeah, Birdo. Birdo, sorry. <laughs> Birdman is an awesome movie. Birdo is an awesome <laughs> mascot that belongs to the way. <laughs> uh, you know, it's, it, I'm glad you brought it up because, you know, one of the things that we truly value at Fitzrovia is art and, and local artists. And we have some great support from our art curator, Ashley Balvahill of Ninth Editions uh, to put together, you know, very beautiful art packages. And as you've noticed, Max, and, you know, we've been working on on this with the Rensing team, but a lot of our banner ads, um, a lot of our social ads, uh, a lot of our collateral feature 
those actual pieces that are going into the Waverly, right? So, and and I think that offers an additional, an incremental level of authenticity, right? And I know that you you pointed at a lot of our pieces on our tour. We talked about Thresh Holmes and Birdo, uh, which is the backdrop to the boxcar social space. Birdo, otherwise known as Jerry Rugg, some incredible pieces going into the space. Uh, we have some great uh, caricature prints by Dan Jameson that feature Vincent Van Gogh, Picasso, Basquiat, like all all these amazing um, artistic people, and it it just it just works right, and it it offers that that additional level of boutique uh, that you don't see a lot, right? Like. It, there seems to be this attitude in the industry to just sort of get stuff done, right? But if you're really going to maximize your revenue or you're really going to maximize your NOI, you need to think about these things because they matter to people. Yeah, to me, it, it felt like touring that building, the art was almost like the glue that uh, ties your brand back to the property, to the other brands that you're supporting within within the property as well with Boxcar. And, like it's it's just a really unique and and uh, new thing to see uh, the importance of art. And it's you know I, I know probably uh, fairly expensive for you guys to do that, but in the grand scheme of things, like to have that tie back to the brand is, is probably a really smart financial decision. Right? So, you know, I want to ask you a little bit about what's next for uh, Fitzrovia now that uh, the Waverly is well underway. I know that uh, you're a bus- very busy guy and that uh, you guys are expanding. Do you want to speak a little bit about what's in the pipeline? Coming up sort of six to eight months, uh, we're, we're going to launch the Parker uh, at Young and Eglinton. It's uh, a bit of a counterpoint to the Waverly. It's more Nordic and Scandinavian and a bit more um, neutral in terms of the design. Very minimalist, kind of Japanese, uh, with an incredible amenity package. Like I'm talking about an infinity pool on the 38th floor, a two-story gym uh, with the same greenhouse juice uh, programming, uh, a kid's room, uh, entertainment kitchen, uh, two bowling alleys, uh, an arcade. Like we, uh, we're really <laughs> pushing the envelope on this one and had the opportunity to tour the suites the other week. And it's, uh, it's, it's truly an exceptional uh, product. Boxcar Social in the lobby as well, a bit bigger than the, uh, the Boxcar Social at the Waverly. And it kind of spills into the lobby in a really beautiful fashion. Uh, so very excited about that one. And then, of course, we have the Elm and the Ledbury at 88 Queen Street East. Uh, 542 units uh, connected by uh, a series of bridges, some really, really great common spaces, uh, some really gorgeous uh, fixtures and suites. So that's going to be a very, very uh, special lease up for us. And we have the hoarding graphics going up in a in a couple of days. So excited to see those go live. And, and yeah, just uh, you, we have we have so much on the go uh, and it's a very exciting time for us. And I've, I've seen the firm grow uh, it's probably doubled since the time I've started. And so I would just say that the one thing that everybody has in common is just a genuine passion for what we do on a daily basis. We we challenge our consultants. We, we really push them to do their best work. And for the most part, everybody's really embraced that. Like everybody sees that we're, we're not just doing this for, for the bottom line. We're doing this uh, because rental developments... Um, they're becoming a larger thing here in Canada, right? Like more people want to live in rentals. They they want that flexibility. Uh, They don't want to be tied down to a mortgage, right? And so I I think that that rental experience can be really, really special. And uh, I believe the team agrees with me. Yeah, I mean, what you guys are doing is is super unique. And I think that's just special to be a part of. And something tells me, you know, after the projects you just mentioned, uh, it's not going to end there <laughs> and that uh, we're going to be hearing a lot more from Fitzrovia and uh, hopefully Ryan Funt <laughs> in the future. And so I, I, I do want to ask you one final question, Ryan. You know, you guys are getting through the way really as a team. Uh, it's your first major project as a team. What are some of the key lessons you've learned already from it um, that you'll be able to apply to these future projects? 
maybe mistakes that you've made that you can quickly correct or or just um yeah what have you learned that that you're going to apply going forward yeah it's a actually a really great question i would just say that when it comes to staying competitive and being bespoke it's super important to stay open minded and take time to reflect and evaluate and i think i mentioned it previously to you uh, Max, but like in our industry, we really get caught up in the day to day and just get caught up in getting stuff done. But if you really want to reimagine, you know, rentals in Canada uh, and be competitive in this market, we really do need to go the extra mile. And it, it sounds cliche, but you, you do have to have those extra conversations. You do have to reach out to others to inform your conclusions. And to elaborate, is a doorknob truly the right specification that's timeless? <laughs> it, no, but it's, it's not. It's not that funny. Like, think about it. Like, is a is a doorknob the right specification that's going to be timeless enough to lease that apartment not only tomorrow but ten years down the line and call it in perpetuity for that matter? When you really think about it, same with our branding, right? Will our property logos and our brand voice withstand the test of time? And for me, it's really about taking the extra time to, to pause in order to make really, really good long-term decisions for Fitzrovia. Cool. And, and I laugh only because <laughs> I literally noticed the doorknobs uh, that you guys had on there. Like you're, the hardware is different. You, you take it back to the most basic thing that there could possibly be in an apartment uh, and it would probably be your door handles. Uh, and you guys did them very differently, which I think speaks to the whole project, right? Uh, and yeah, I got to find out where you got those. Because you remember, I, was, I like those doorknobs. So. I, I think that, that that ending comment that you just said, Ryan, about around the doorknobs, I think that just goes to the, the, whole, the whole lesson that we've learned in this episode <laughs> is just how the devils are in the details of really creating a rental experience that, that goes above and beyond for luxury built rentals. And I think that this whole episode was really about learning what that involves. And I think that a lot of people listening to it are going to say, wow. We are not thinking about things the way we should be thinking about them. And these guys are, you know, you do have to go above and beyond in order to to meet the expectations of, of what your community wants and needs. And, and if you want premium rents, you have to offer them premium amenities and services. And, and it's been a pleasure chatting with you. And before we go, can you please let listeners know where they can connect with you? Thank you for that really great summary. Yeah, yeah, of course. And I, I say it all the time. Um, anyone that has a passion for our industry or a passion for best in class design or marketing tactics, I'm always down, you know, to grab a cup of coffee and exchange ideas. Uh, very open that way. So uh, best way to reach me is via email at our fund at fitzrobia.re.ca. And looking forward to, to hearing from a few folks. Awesome. Well, thank you again for taking the time to join me on your birthday for this episode of Get Synced. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was great. This is a great uh, birthday surprise. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Happy birthday. And thank you, Max, for helping me host this episode. And until next time, keep swimming. You've reached the end of another episode of Sink or Swim. Make sure to visit us at rentsync.com forward slash podcast to access show notes, key takeaways, and where you can sign up to our newsletter to receive free bonus content. If you found value in this show, please also remember to rate, review, and subscribe. Don't forget to join us next week for another episode. Thanks for listening.